Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, it's Alex Bennett, it is The Ramble, and it goes from now until midnight Eastern Daylight Time, and uh, we'll get to our citizens panel in just a little bit, but as always, uh, we like to check in occasionally with an old friend of ours. Hello to Larry Bubbles Brown. Hi there, Larry. Hello, Alex. How are you doing, Larry? I'm gearing up for fall and winter, which I hate. So, it, well, how about summer? You hate summer too? No, I like I like summer. And every like every light. everybody loves spring. Like, yeah, yeah. See, I hate summer because it gets too fucking hot these days. Uh, I well, back where you are, yeah, yeah, we freeze out here in the summer. So, I like when it's kind of cold. I get, and I guess part of the reason is I was raised in San Francisco, so I'm used to a colder climb, mm-hmm. and that's what I was raised on. Okay, was the colder climb. So, anyway, uh, we have the old some, Mark Twain adage it was. Yeah, yeah we have uh, uh, some uh, vacuuming going on next door because they've been doing some work next door, and I asked them to stop, and they at, at one, and they did. So one is when we're taping this, folks. So. So what are we going to talk about for the next 25 minutes? Anything on your mind? Well, I was thinking uh, uh, timing is everything. And uh, <laughs> I, when TV started, what was the biggest show was I Love Lucy, right? Right. And I just, I watch, sometimes I watch those reruns. Oh, my God, they were horrible. <laughs> so just, well, yeah. I guess. The right place at the right time, but they made a fortune. No, but the, you know what they they were they were, yeah. They, it was the right thing at the right time. It was at a time when this new nascent uh, 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 technology called television needed something to really put it on the map. Now, the you know there are certain people who who started most mediums basically. I mean. If we have television, we have to thank Milton Berle. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I remember as a kid in North Beach on Tuesday nights going down to the local uh, uh, furniture, I think it was a furniture store called Fagoni and Riley. And they would turn the television set on in the window because they were closed at night. But they would turn the television set on in the window and they had a big speaker outside so you could hear the audio. And people, would, who because nobody had a TV set in those days, would gather around on Tuesday night in front of this uh, furniture store to watch Milton Berle. And Milton Berle was an impetus for people to go what, out. Oh, they did start the vacuuming again. Uh, to start uh, uh, the impetus to start uh, buying television sets. Hey, I got to see Milton Berle. How much are television sets? Oh, there's five hundred dollars. Well, I'll put it out anyway. You know, I can do it on installments. And you got your first television set. Now we didn't get our first television set. We didn't get it while we were living in North Beach. We got it when we moved to San Anselmo, and my father decided to buy a TV. Do you re- do you re- well? You you're too young for this. For you yeah, I don't re- remember. I do remember people tell me that they would actually go to stores and watch TVs because they didn't have their own. And right, but they all gather but, around the window. But, yeah, but you didn't live at a period of time where I could ask you the question: What was your first TV set? Because uh, when you were born, there was probably, it probably already, would have been around 1959. Uh, and there was, was really pro- there was already a television set in your house. We had one in the house. It was a crappy one. I think it was a uh, Sylvania or uh, they're all made in America. Then I think. Yeah, they were. That's why they were crappy. Uh, horrible pictures. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, the big thing was we'd go to these department stores and they that's when, when color TVs were around, but they they cost too much for anybody then. They were like. I think there were five hundred bucks then, and the, which and would the be screens, like you know, you thousands remember, now. The screens were really small too. 
Yeah. They didn't have big color screens. And the color was horrible. The color, no, well, I, I don't know that it was horrible. Uh, it was not as good as we get today, obviously. But it was, uh, it was, it was okay. You know, the thing is, America adopted when they when they decided on a television standard, they adopted 425 lines, I think, of resolution. 525 lines. 525, yeah. 525 lines of resolution. Now, in those days, you had what you called uh, uh, scanned vid uh, television, so that you had lines in the screen. And each of those lines were constantly being fed to the screen. You remember how when you went up close to the TV screen, there were these lines? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so that was 525 resolution. When you got to Europe, it was something like 750 or something like that. Europe got into television later, and they said, oh, let's do higher resolution. So even up into the, uh, uh, I guess, Maybe the 80s, if you went to Europe and you turned on a television set, you gasped at how clear the picture was. And we were still right, doing... that's what I always heard. We were still using this 525 lines. So, you know, um, uh, but I remember my first TV set because... Oh, what, what? Oh, wait a minute. There's my super. Hold on a second. Let's see what he says. Yes. Yes, Jose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, he he just said 25 more minutes of vacuuming. <laughs> 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 anyway, see, we can stop for this sort of stuff when we're doing our discussions here. You, you can't hear it, folks, so it doesn't really matter. But it was nice of him to call me back. He's a very decent mm -hmm. super, for me at least. Anyway, here, here, here's what I was going to say, is that, you know, we bought a television set. We didn't have a television set, and we waited for it to come. The first thing it had to go is the first people who came in were the people who put up the antenna, which was a 20-foot tall antenna on top of our roof because we were in Marin County, and, and it wow. had to be tall enough to pick up the picture from San Francisco. And they had to, like, find the sweet spot where you got the best of all the major stations uh, later on, people got what they called tenor rotors, and the rotors you could you could rotate the antennas to pick up the best signal. But at the, in those days, we had a fixed antenna, and then they brought in the television set, and my parents decided to buy. Are you ready for this? A traveler. What? Whoever heard? Uh -huh. Did you ever hear of a traveler? No, no. Traveler. T R A V L E R. Traveler. And uh, it was a uh, it was a, it was a nice set. It was great. In fact, as opposed to the click kind of things that you had for turning to channels, it had literally a dial that you could rotate, and it would you could kind of get a better signal if you tuned it just right, like a radio in mm -hmm. those days. So anyway, um, and uh, that was our first that was our first TV set, uh, and. I guess it lasted them quite a while because I remember my fa my parents having it for several years, even after I moved out. So, you know, that was our first TV set. Uh, today, you don't think about antennas on roofs because you got cable, you know, and um, you know. But antennas were uh, antennas dotted the landscape. I don't know. You probably remember that, right? Oh yeah, yeah, sure. And then uh, uh, Milton Berle was. I'd read that in 1950, NBC signed him to a contract guaranteeing him 100000 a year for 25 years, which at the time was a huge money. It was huge money. And 25 years, my God. And he kept getting paid for that 25 years, by the way. Yeah, even though he wasn't on, right. Yeah, yeah. And Milton Berle, for how, you know, and he wasn't, he was a mediocre comedian, I think, in a lot of opinions. Uh, but um, he somehow caught people's attention. And um, that show is the show that made television. That made people go out and buy television sets. And so um, it, 
if you want to talk about who is the person most responsible for television, it's Milton Berle. Now, my parents bought the, my parents bought the TV set because my parents loved your show of shows, you know. But that was long after we were watching it in the you know window of the of Fagoni and Riley. Uh, I wonder why I remember the name of that furniture store. <laughs> what street was it on? It was, well, I can't I can't remember the street now. You know, I I, I almost couldn't remember the street. Uh, I was trying to tell somebody about the earthquake and that. At a certain street, all the damage stopped because that's where the landfill stopped. And I couldn't remember the name of the street. And now I kind of remembered a Chestnut Street. Yeah, it came up to, yeah, right. But why, right. why couldn't I remember that? I could remember Lombard, but I couldn't remember Chestnut Street. Yeah, Chestnut's a block over from Lombard. Yeah, and, and that's where if you went to the, uh, to the earthquake uh, to see the earthquake damage, it, there was no damage uh, uh, yeah, it was all below that. Yeah, uh, where, above, which was where you were <laughs> above Chestnut Street. Someone like almost like somebody drew a line because that's where uh, when they did the Pan American Exposition, they took all the rubble from the 1906 earthquake and dumped it into uh, that area. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, they dumped it into that area. And uh, and then they built the 1916 what Pan American Exposition on that spot, and then after it was gone, except for the Palace of Fine Arts, which is still there, um, which was one of the smaller structures, by the way. Uh, they yeah, then, I've seen pictures of that. It, the stuff they built for that looked incredible. It was huge. I mean, the, the Palace of Fine Arts, which you go to and you go, wasn't that huge? It, it was small compared to everything else. But anyway, when the Pan American Exposition was over, all this stuff was built with plaster of Paris, so they just knocked it right down, except for the Palace of Fine Arts, knocked it all down, and they built homes on that yep. land. And then, of course, the Loma Prieta Quake comes along, and everybody finds that the area is liquefying because it's shaking so much that liquid is coming up. You know, it wasn't prominent, but it was enough. And uh, it was a very bad place to have a home, oddly enough, in the case of an earthquake. But it was built on the rubble of the 1906 earthquake. So we should have learned our lesson in 1906, right? Yeah, well, we'll, we'll get hit again. <laughs> oh, you're not only going to get hit again. Um, they, they have problems now. You know, in San Francisco, they had a thing where you couldn't build a building taller than, I think it was 20 floors. Because of the earthquake factor, and now they're building them. What? How how tall is the newest buildings? Um, they they've got the thing called the sales force, which is, they're already they're having problems with that. It's uh, that's got to be at least sixty stories high. Yeah, it's yeah. Huge. You, you but you can't do that in San Francisco, and so this thing is starting to lean and crack. Yeah, as is the uh, the Millennial Tower, a couple blocks over from that, has been cracking for about a year now. Now this brand new building starting to crack, and it, it's leaning. It's leaning. Now they're hammering next door. Uh, it's leaning, uh, and it's all because it's on not the best ground in the world to build tall buildings on. No, that was that was like part of the bay, which they just filled in with old ships 150 years ago. So it's horrible land to build on. Oh, really? I didn't know that. I thought that was actual land. That was fill in. No, it's, it, pre it's pretty bad. That yeah. was landfill as well. So how do you build a building on landfill that tall? Not a good idea. Not a, not a good idea. But I hope they all fall down. And I hope uh, it, it kill, kills all the Silicon Valley rats who have moved into San Francisco. Yeah, I'm wishing <laughs> I'm wishing death on those people. They have ruined my city. They have. What are you laughing about? You probably feel the same way. <laughs> you and I, you and I have. We like to cheer for disasters. But, well, you remember. But I think we're right. You remember the the big uh, the big uh, thing I was trying to tell everybody to do to tourists in San Francisco because I found tourists to be disgusting. They clogged up the streets and everything else. Is that if you see a if you meet up with a uh, a, a tourist, spit on them. 
<laughs> and after a while, after about 100 people get spit on, the, the word's going to get out, don't go to San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> You may get a lung lung projectile heaved in your face, you know. Uh, yeah, but yeah, get the techies out of here, God. Well, you know, I mean, in a way, it would be wonderful if they didn't try to change the city into their own image. Uh, th this is sometimes the ruination of places. There's a wonderful town, which you know of because you work at Throckmorton occasionally, called Mill Valley. Mm -hmm. And Mill Valley is kind of quaint in its own sweet way, but it's, a, it's really overly quaint from the way it was when I grew up there. And it was just a really nice town. And then all of a sudden people moved in from you know, Missouri and other places and put their imprint on the city, but they wanted to make it extra cute. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, I hate it when these people, I don't mind if these people come in and move in, don't change the nature of the city. And they have. Yeah, a lot of people in Mill Valley now get rich people move in there. They got the quaint, they buy the quaint house and they tear that down and put up a McMansion, which uh, 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 looks yeah. hellish. Yeah. So, I mean, I just hate what these people do to San Francisco because they have no respect for what it was. San Francisco is a very unique city. Had its own architecture had its own feel uh beautiful town wonderful town and when very you, few high buildings it looked very mediterranean and then uh, yeah it's not meant for high rises i i had people who were world travelers who say that san francisco reminded them of london that but yeah. not just for the fog uh but uh actually the london fog you know the whole thing about the london fog London doesn't, I think, indigenously have a lot of fog these days. But the London fog became famous because they had a smog outbreak in London years ago. And it was killing people. And that's where they came up with the idea of the London fog. You know, And they made it very romantic, the London fog. But really, it was the London smog. Yeah, it was, I think in 1950, it killed about 5,000 people. See, couldn't see your hand in front of your face, you know. Yeah, it was, it was bad. It was. Uh... Yeah, but anyway, so I bet, but they did. They they have said they said to me, hey, this this town reminds me of London because it's a Victorian architecture, a whole bunch of stuff like that that makes it feel like that. And it was just a great city. Now I haven't been back in. God, since I got married, which is eight years now, something like that. Yeah, well, if you come back, you're going to be horrified and heartbroken, I think. Yeah, well, that's what I'm told. That's why I haven't gone yeah. back. You know, I mean, uh, I'm going to go back to a city that I love, that some pe that people have come in and destroyed. You know, and, and everybody, I mean, everybody's complaining about this who are... are tried and true residents of that town and it, so uh, so we got to do something about all those uh, those techies and i i think maybe uh, spitting on them would be a beginning <laughs> that's a good start that would be a start <laughs> you know like you see one you spit on them you know what go, would herb kane do <laughs> no go back go back to silicon valley because that doesn't have any flavor to it that was built up it used to be that I remember years ago, if you traveled from San Francisco to San Jose, there was a big area in which there was there were no homes. There was no real population. It was just, you know, farmland. And you, then you got to San Jose. Now you can go from San Francisco to San Jose and it's just, you know, one community after another. It's all filled in. Well, all that being filled in really doesn't have its own flavor you know what i'm saying like san francisco so get them to move back to silicon valley you know where they can put their imprint on it all they want and they're not going to ruin the area yeah but yeah so. i think it's too late so for people listening who don't even know about san francisco or the bay area this must be really boring <laughs> well mill valley was the uh you know what movie was supposed to have taken place in the city of Mill well, Valley? What it was was the okay, the book when it was written by I'm trying to remember the guy's name, 
Winningham, maybe? Is that, does that ring a bell? Anyway, um, uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the guy who wrote the book, lived in Mill Valley. Yes, yeah, you know, see, I knew you would know this. Yeah, so he, he made it Mill Valley. I don't think he called it Mill Valley in the book. He didn't call it Mill Valley. But it was supposed to be Mill Valley. It was based on Mill Valley. Right. And, um, which, you know, when you say the name Mill Valley, to you and I, we just spout it out like it's a name, right? We don't even think about it. We, Mill Valley. What does that mean? People are listening. Mill Valley. What must mill valley be anyway so then they made the movie invasion of the body snatchers and while they didn't film it in uh, mill valley uh it was supposed to be basically mill valley so yeah yeah that was the town and and now they do have those pod people walking around uh (laughs) exactly (laughs) fiction becomes truth you know it's the way it is but um that was this was a uh yeah. So I did I answer the trivia question correctly? You did. Yeah, I can I can't get one by you. It's uh that was uh, that movie scared me when I was a little kid. Too. Yeah. Yeah. No, that that movie I loved actually. They changed the ending though. Uh and years later they found the missing footage and they um uh they they restored the ending. In the ending uh, he's out in the street, and they rush him into the hospital, and he says, uh, oh, you know, something or another, and then somebody says, well, we better get the police out there, right? So it has a happy ending, right? Oh, okay. Right? In the original version, the one that they finally, when they restored it, they ended it this way, he's standing in the middle of the street saying, people, won't you listen? They're coming. They're coming. Yeah. And then they, it goes to the theme song. You know, it doesn't have a happy ending, but Hollywood, in their infinite wisdom, said to the uh, uh, the producers and director, I can't remember who the director was now. Uh, you guys, uh, let's uh, let's make this a little happier. The let's give them hope. You know, okay, all right. So they did the thing where go, hey, get the police. Let's go out to I don't know whatever the name of the town was, Santa Clarita or something like that. And let's, uh, there's something happening there, you know. Uh, this guy isn't crazy. So that, that, that was the original ending. So I like the, I like the, the well, I, that's the newer ending, the original ending I like better. So, because I, you know, and, and you would like it too, because it means the loss of all hope. And that's something we believe. <laughs> in, exactly. That we believe. And you know who had a bid part in there who later became a famous director? Well, I'm going to take a guess. Okay, I can only take a guess. Robert Altman, uh, Sam Peckinpah. Sam Peckinpah. Yes, he w- wasn't a bit part. He, you're right. He played the uh, the uh, Dana Dana Winters' father. Yeah, she was hot. She was the woman. Yeah, Dana Winters' father in the picture. Uh, and he was so he was in it quite a bit. He wasn't just an extra. He didn't. I thought it was a bit part. Okay. Oh, when you said when you said Kevin McCarthy was when you said bit part. Well, I didn't think I wasn't thinking in the right direction. See, I was thinking somebody a bit part to me is somebody who's on screen but he doesn't get a credit. You know. <laughs> so Peck and Paul is. Uh... Uh, you know, I, get, I go over to Mill Valley sometimes to get to talk to Mort Saul, who knows probably about as much about movies as you do. And uh, yeah. he loves Peck and Paul, but has some great stories about him. And yeah, he was a you know a great director. You know, but he he was an actor for a while, so uh, he was in that movie. But uh, when you said bit part, I I don't know that I would have come up with Peck and Paul because I forgot about it. But when you finally mentioned Peck and Paul, I know exactly what he played in the movie. So mm-hmm. you know that's how my brain works. What brain is and, left? And then they did. Uh, I think in '78 there was a remake of the Body Snatchers, which was terrible. That was actually shot in San Francisco. Well, it wasn't terrible. It was done by a San Francisco director. Uh, I remember his name now because I used to know him. Uh, he did uh, he did uh, the right stuff, uh, and he directed that. And it, it, they tried to kind of modernize it and bring it up to date, you know. Uh, 
but you're right, it wasn't as good as the original. The original had a really scary factor to it. and It uh, did, yeah. I, we're going to run a little over here, but I'll just quickly tell you this. Well, I have enough time to tell you this. Uh, uh, invasion of the Body Snatchers is a tome for communism. Right. I mean, if you think about it, it, it's the fear we had in those days about communists coming and taking over our minds and our well-being and so on. And so this thing about these people coming along and, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, stealing your body was a, was a uh, uh, how could we call it, what would we call it? It was, a, uh, it, was, it, was, it was supposed to be like a tome about communism, but people, mm -hmm. people didn't, didn't feel that. So the reason they liked that movie is because that was one of their very real fears that they had at the time. So, hey, listen, Bubs. Another great 25 minutes has flown by and more blistering by, yeah. More of our life has been totally wasted. Uh, <laughs> but it's never wasted when you spend some time with Larry Bubbles Brown. Yeah. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Alex. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. And that's our dear old friend, Larry Bubbles Brown. We always enjoy talking to him. The only reason why you don't see him is he uh, is so, such a Luddite that he doesn't have Skype. He doesn't really even have, he doesn't have, he has dial-up still. Okay? I love to mention that. Still has dial-up. I love him. He's old-fashioned. Anyway, uh, let's turn on the phone, see if anybody's going to call. Patrick says he can't call tonight. Uh... Ray, I don't think we'll call tonight because uh, I had dinner, uh, lunch with him just yesterday here in New York. So I don't know if he yet got back to the San Francisco Bay Area or when he was planning on going back. But he was here for a wedding and um, we, uh, uh, we had lunch yesterday with him and had a really nice time. So, you know, that made that all well and good. Let me see here. I just got to get a few things all fixed up here. By the way, uh, let me mention that we are now officially on Spotify. Uh, if you are a person who uses Spotify, uh, just simply put in Alex Bennett or put in the name uh, The Intersection or put in the name Michael Snyder or put in the name uh, The Arena or put in the name, uh, let's see here. Uh, did I say The Intersection? Okay. Uh, so far, uh, Damien isn't up, and, and the reason he isn't up is that I t told him I'd do it for him, but he said, I'll do it, you know, and I don't know if he's done it yet. So um, and there's no way of me to tell uh, unless I'm able to, I tried to get, bring it up and it didn't come up, so, uh, you know. Uh, but we will get Damien on there either when he eventually decides to do it or just says, okay, Alex, you do it for me. Um, but anyway, uh, we're on it. We're on Spotify, and uh, we're lost in the jungle that is Spotify. You know, I mean, people say, "Oh, well, you know, there, there are, there are, are uh, hundred and what is it, two hundred thirty million people who use Spotify every month." And I went, "Yeah, well, less, more." And then, how many uh, uh, podcasts are there? And the number of podcasts there are is extraordinary. Uh, and, and so we get lost in the middle of all of that. So we'll get two or three listeners from it, I'm sure. Hello, Phil. Hey, Mr. Alex. Yeah. Uh, so, you're, you're a little out of sync until somebody else calls up, and then you won't be out of sync anymore. Yeah, well, uh, my mother used to wash me in the sink. Well, no, that's fine. <laughs> Actually, you'll look fine now. You'll look fine. All right. I, mean, I don't know if these pills are working for me. Uh, they, they certainly are not a problem for me. Yeah. Um, but my toes still ache and, you know, things like that. So. Yeah. When are you going to try the chiropractor? Uh, 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 shortly after I die. <laughs> well, 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 you were talking about the chiropractor causing you all kinds of problems. Uh, no. I, uh, what I said was that the chiropractor I'm using now uh, does a very, very gentle adjustment. You almost don't know that you've been adjusted. <coughs> mm. uh, I'm, I don't know that uh, the 20 some odd 30 years I've been going to a chiropractor had uh, caused any issues, but um, they keep telling me that most of my problem is musculature. 
and uh, that you don't, I ha- that you don't have, I have it. You don't have any. Yeah, well, I've got to build them up, and especially in my neck. Uh, what's happening is uh, I've lost the curve in it, and so my head leans forward. And that, you know, like old men, you see them kind of slouch forward. Well, I'm in the first stage of that, and I'm doing my best to correct it. Oh, I'm way into the tenth stage of that now. I'm, I, yeah. I, I walk slightly slouched over. Slightly. Yeah. Girlfriend's always, well, you know, girlfriend is always nagging me. Uh, she is the ultimate nagging wife. Um, yeah. Let me let me explain that so that she doesn't get mad at me later when she comes home. <laughs> what do you mean I'm the nagging wife? She's always getting on my case about something. I guess that would be a nagging wife, right? That yeah, could be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, or maybe she loves you. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's things like... Uh, uh, it's like uh, okay, we have this old, we have this dining room table, and I decide to set up the old uh, iMac to see if I could kind of resuscitate it. And it looks like I can't because the hard drive, it seems, is trash. And but I'm I, I the only place in the house I had to work on it was the dining room table. Now, when we're talking about dining room table here, we're not talking about your normal dining room table. This was like some kind of table that was outdoors and was weathered and all of that, and she had it kind of varnished, but it's still, it's got all kinds of nicks in it and things like that. It's very nice. That's called patina. Yeah, yeah, it has a nice patina to it. Uh, And it really looks great in the kitchen, but it isn't, and I'll say this again, uh, uh, it's got all kinds of nicks in it already, and she says... Uh, if you're going to use the mouse, put down a, 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 a pad in, a yeah. for it be, so that you don't nick the wood. And I'm going, what? Well, this wood is all, it varnished. It's already pre-nicked. You don't want to nick the varnish. No, well, it, it's already pre-nicked. You should see it. You'll see, you, and plus, I'll, mice mice don't have a roller anymore. They don't have any surface that actually uh, uh, impacts the uh, the uh, the table. Right? Yeah, mice, still, mice don't have rollers anymore. No, don't have just, little balls. No, no, nah. no. Nah. Huh? Uh, yeah. They they've been taken away by the Me Too movement. I it I have a trackpad and I and I love my trackpad, so I haven't seen a mouse in a you long time. You know, I've time. never been able to get used to a trackpad. Uh, I've tried you and know, I've tried YouTube, Brian. No, I couldn't get used to a trackpad, but uh, I do like the uh, ballless mice. The, well, the, well, there are no bald mice anymore. He was talking about ballless. So I like ball, ballless mice. Oh, you like ballless, ballless mice? mice. Okay. okay, so you go around. Okay. The mechanisms they get dirty and they need clean. They would need clean. Yeah. Well, I mean, they well, just don't do that anymore. All of them are have uh, infrared. Yeah. You know. Huh. Well, I I got a trackpad when I got the Mac Pro, and yeah. uh, because it came with it. And uh, so I've been using it, but it, it's not as exact. I'm going to go back to my Wacom. You know, I have a, a small Wacom, uh, Wacom with a, with a pen. Wascom, it's I think it's called. It's no, the, W-A-C-O-M. Yeah, W-A-O-C-O-S. Wascom, Wacom? Yeah, W-A-C-O-M. Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, Brian? I was going to say to Phil's uh, remark there, I, I, I caught wind of that. Um, the uh, Me Too movement came about when uh, mice balls started rolling where they don't belong. <laughs> I, 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 I see. Or at least got accused of rolling <laughs> where they don't belong. Yep. <laughs> well, you see it in your vicinity, and you can hold it in your vicinity, and you can pick it up in your vicinity. Yeah, it's not where it belongs. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Well, <laughs> unless you want it there. Yeah. But mice don't have balls anymore. Never uh, mind. In no. fact, they, neither do men. They, they they stopped they stopped having balls. What? Uh, probably in the mid nineties, didn't they? No. What are you talking about, men or mice? Mice, or maybe but, but men the, are but, mice. But even the ones that were infrared still had like a cord attached to them. Oh, those kind yeah. of mice. And now uh, they're all wireless. Yeah. yeah. Now they're. I, I would think you can't buy a wired one anymore, can you? No, I don't think no. so. Right. But they they called them mice because they had a tail on them. You know, basically. Right. And and so yeah. that went. But you know the thing I hate about the uh, about the. Uh, uh, the Apple Mouse. Mm-hmm. Uh, Apple is really very intuitive and very cool, right? Like they built this uh, wireless uh, keyboard, and then for charging it, they have the charger on the back. So what you can do is you can plug in your lightning yeah. plug into it and still keep using the keyboard. 
Mm -hmm. Where on the mouse did they put the lightning connector? They oh, put on the, the lightning oh, no. connector. Right well, you have there. to roll it over so it's right, on its back. Right there. You can't use, you can't use it while it's being charged. If they just put it like here or something like that. So but they rude. didn't want they didn't want to Or in the back, they you did, know, on the side, you know, on the side in the front or the back. They didn't want so to have oddly to. enough, I wish oddly enough I wish they'd do that with cars, you know, where the gas tank would be on the back or the front of the vehicle that way people wouldn't have to clog up the uh, lines well, and gas it's stations. Apple going, we don't, some wanna, are. we don't want to ruin our wonderful... I've noticed some are, but not minute. enough. It's Apple going, we don't want to ruin our wonderful design. I, so, I used to have a car, I can't remember which one it was, but you you took the rear license plate and you moved it Move back down. It's on a hinge, and that's where you put the gas in. A Wait. Jaguar or an MG? No, the MG had it uh, on to the right the side of the trunk. Uh, I had one where it was on the back of that trunk. Oh, that's because you had an MGB. I had Why an can't MGA. Automakers get like tax breaks for doing shit like that, you know? You know, make it factory standard. Yeah. Well, they're still trying to figure out how to get people on a plane without them killing each other. Uh, you know, everybody says that they've come up with a new uh, seat assignment system to to uh, to get people on a plane. Uh, I haven't seen how that works. No, they they've had it for a long time where they do they do the uh, they do the back rows first, I think, and then they mm -hmm. move their way up to the front rows. Yeah, well, when they say does anybody need help getting on, I just get on. <laughs> no, but here's what happens though. I got to tell you and then I'll go to Renee, she got her hand up. Yeah. Uh You were uh, just flying. Yeah, I mean, the fact is that what's bad about flying isn't so much whether people get on before you or they you know they're in the back of the plane whatever Overhead. it's all these people that are bringing on every bit of luggage they can now it, it, of course those overheads are going to get stuffed because they're charging you for luggage now if you if you if you take it you know go with it. so what i do is i take my baggage online uh, up to the the, to the, the gate, gate and there's always some kind of announcement we're overbooked on this if you would like to store your luggage you know in the in the luggage compartment uh just let us know and i always let them know and i get my luggage for free did you hear about that uh photographer that did that and uh ten thousand dollars worth of photography oh, yeah. equipment went missing yeah, but we don't do that. No, I don't. No, that, I don't. That's crazy. My cameras all come on the uh, on the. Uh, I well, have, I have a uh, a carry on for uh, camera equipment. Good and idea. And if they say it's too big, there's an inner lining with handles, and you just pull it out, and it's smaller, Obviously so you can definitely smaller. put it in the overhead compartment. But yeah, no wheels. I would. So it's only two hundred and fifty bucks, if I remember correctly. That's Boy. all you get reimbursed when they lose your luggage. That's you gotta the have max. insurance. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I'm if you don't have so if if Alex didn't take out any insurance and his airline ticket was his insurance proving that he he had a baggage tag. No, no, no his homeowners or his renters well, insurance. Yeah, but the airline will only pay you two hundred and fifty. If you want to file against your homeowners insurance, you could probably get more than that. But don't put more than two hundred and fifty dollars of crap in your luggage because you won't get it back. So, so yeah, that photographer he ten thousand dollars worth of photography. Well, equipment. on your on your homeowners, there's a thing called uh, what is it? Uh, where you commercial pay, you, rider? You, know, you pay an extra pay an extra amount of money to insure a higher uh, price. Yeah, item. it's it's called a uh, not a rider. Rider, it's a rider. Called, yeah, it is a rider. Yeah. Uh, all right. And and I found so it's scheduled it's scheduled property. No, That's it's called a rider though. You get a yeah, rider. but you have it's, you have to schedule the property. Each yeah. individual yeah. item has yeah. to be. So fixed. you know, I mean, Marjorie has all her jewelry and everything on the rider, but none of my cameras or anything like that are on the rider, and I'm paying half of the insurance every year. Well, then why don't cameras? you call the insurance company up and tell them what stuff you got? It's not think... her job to do it for you. I don't think any of his cameras are more than a deductible. I, I, I mean, how much is a Go, you know, how much is a GoPro? <laughs> a GoPro or, uh, GoPro's worth 400. 400. So if you have a $500 deductible, you might as well not claim it. Don't right. bother. R right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 And, so, and and cameras and that's the problem. The only reason I was saying that was he he's correct. 
it devalues so fast that it with this tech equipment that, that doesn't matter uh, the devaluation when, when of you're, the yeah because there's two kinds of insurance rcv and acv acv is actual cash value and that means it's depreciated rcv is replacement cash value and that is what it would cost to get a new gopro today even okay. if yours is five years old. I'm sure my Apple Watch now is uh, bought it for what? S with uh, everything. 661 with the tax and the, the uh, I got the insurance and so on. But I'm, I'm, I suppose if I tried to get rid of it today, it's worth uh, maybe 200. <laughs> you know, the value, went down cents. The, the value <laughs> went down the minute I put it on my wrist. Right, it's like so, buying a new so car. So Marjorie sends me this thing, right? That in the, from the New York Times, the Apple Watch may not be as good in detecting heart problems as they claim. Whoa! And I, I went in, she was in the other room when she sent it to me, and I said, why did you send this to me? I don't care. That's not why I bought the watch. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't buy the watch to have it tell me when I might have a heart problem. You know, I, don't, I, guess I, I got enough right, problems, huh? right? No, I don't think, no, you're not right. What, it's, what it was saying essentially was there are so many false positives in that sort of thing that there might be an undue amount of people going to their doctors when they don't need to. That's the, that's the, uh, uh, the problem. But this thing is supposed to tell you when you're defibrillating, or you're fibrillating, I guess, because you get a defibrillator to stop Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah. I think that this is just the beginning. It may not be great right now, but I think eventually, if you're able to wear around your wrist something that is predictive of some heart condition you might have, that's pretty good. You know, we're going to save a lot of lives. So, you know. Uh, or I mean, you'll have a lot of false positives. But, but, but that's not why I bought the watch. I bought the watch because Mickey says. It's 1047. See? So. <laughs> Uh, I have a an original. I paid six hundred and sixty one dollars for. It's ten forty seven. <laughs> oh, he might laugh that time. Do you hear? Yeah. Him? yeah. Sometimes he yeah, laughs. That, and he, yeah, he's, sometimes, he's laughing at the moron that spent six hundred and sixty dollars to hear him tell you what time yeah, it well, is. Well, sometimes he goes. He goes. It's uh, you know like it's uh, it's uh, ten of ten. Good night, pal. I oh, don't pal. like being called pal. You know. It's better than being called chief. How you doing, pal? It's 1048. <laughs> no, you laughed that time. Why didn't you like being called chief? Oh, no, no, no. Chief is, uh, uh, there's a commercial out that, uh, oh. I think it's a Geico commercial, where uh, the guy is saying he's becoming his parents, and, oh, uh, you know, know. and he's calling people chief. You know? Yeah. Uh, so, now I remember. So, so uh, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, you like your watch, don't you, uh? Yeah. Okay. And matter of fact, I'm thinking I'm up. I'm gonna up my um, activity because I'm blowing through the 300 calorie point. Wait. I'm gonna change now. I can see that I'm blowing through it without a problem. Wait. I'm gonna change it to try to burn 400 calories per day. Wait a minute. My 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 old watch, the Series Two, that does that. It has an activity thing on it. Yes, I've but there the is a, there, there's a difference I have activity noticed. Activity program on my phone. No, right there's there. an a di there's an a, di a difference I have noticed. Yeah, uh, yeah. I got more uh, calories burned today, and I went and worked out. But before, it didn't measure my workout, and now yeah, it's taking see, into not... consideration my workout. So today, I burned over 400 calories because I worked out. Well, and that was kind of the question. Is it that I'm really blowing through that many calories, or is it has just gotten that much better in detecting all of my it, emotions? It, it's gotten better in detecting your emotions because before it was receiving a uh, it was receiving all its information that it got basically from the phone. Uh, uh, you, oh. you know, uh, it wasn't tracking yeah. now, from the see, wrist. Today, how much did I do today? Uh, activity. <laughs> So far, uh, I'm I'm really burning through them today. I'm uh, at uh, oops, time to stand. Uh, it said I have to stand. Yeah. yeah, and and you listen to it. It's my master. Uh, yeah, I, you know it, this, this is the independent okay. thinker thinker that I've known to. Uh, wow, uh, going to Costco, I burned like seven thousand steps. <laughs> no, that was how much was in the cart. 
Well, I, I have, uh, let's see here. today. 6,356 my... steps. T- today I did, um, wait a minute, what is it, 500? What? How much? Uh, 635 calories. Burned 635 calories. That's really good. And my exercise is 34 minutes out of 30, uh, out of 30 minutes that I have it normally do. That was when I was on the bike. Uh, and... Um, Standing, I need to stand some more tonight today. Total step, 6,076 steps I took. Damn, he beat me. Yeah. Uh, and I now, 6,076 steps, I didn't even, what is that, I, I didn't quarter even, of I didn't, a mile? I didn't, I didn't even leave my apartment, so that's how big it is. Wow. Oh, no. So I went to Costco, had 6,356 steps. He stayed home. Well, and I, I, went, I, went, I went down the street and worked out. Okay. Oh, okay. There. Okay, that makes me feel better. I'm thinking that's a cavernous place. <laughs> you know, but but yeah, I have. So how many miles then? Because I only have three miles. Well, the miles are. Uh, let's see, three point two miles. Think, 3. If you 0. think a step miles. is uh, is a foot, then that's uh, and six thousand steps would be a mile, right? Well, five thousand two hundred and eighty feet. What time is it? It's uh, close. ten fifty one. I'm being Ow. obnoxious with my watch. So, uh, so Phil, have you even taken that two back to the Apple Store yet, so you can see the different, compare the difference yet? I don't like wearing it. I stopped wearing it. Well, and then that brings me to another thing. I mistakenly bought the new watch with that material band that I have somewhere. Absolutely, you're a material hated. girl. It was disgusting. It wouldn't stay put. Go, I hate go it. Go get one of these. So I, Went to Amazon and got a fucking ten dollar band. That's and it's right. Perfect. That's right. This is I, a this is a fifteen dollar band, and it's like the you know like the the the, the link. Uh, I like the Hermes. Uh, oh, band. you like Hermes. those? Yeah, oh, yeah, I thought that was nice. The double wrapped or the non double wrap? Uh, I hadn't looked that closely. It was oh. the one that had a nice clasp. It was yeah. kind of a beige, not beige. It was like a tan. It's a nice uh, tan leather. Yeah, I, yeah. I love this. I, nice lo- I love this one. I bought for fifteen dollars. I've been using it for a couple of years now, and it's perfect. It's the Hermes knockoff is thirty-five bucks online. It's like four hundred dollars at the Apple Store. Yeah. Well, then shit, buy that because uh, you know what, I Phil, I hated the band that you got, but when I got the Nike band. It was much better because it has a bunch of holes in it, and it was. I I, it was uh, I looked at nicer. that. Yeah, I looked it at really that, made I, it different. I won't buy a Nike product. No, no, no! Just go online and buy a cheap oh, one. Oh, why not? I heard Phil? him. I heard him. Uh, yeah, I'm just I gonna him. ignore him. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I, I, I actually I won't purchase a Nike product. I, just I went buying uh, workout clothes the other day. The guy says, "Ooh, Nike." I said, "No, no Nike." Oh, but w- w- way to way to represent the racist. Yeah. <laughs> no, how about he, support the police? D- like the police use? Well, I don't know. Maybe cops do use New Balance shoes, but so, I doubt it. So you support people who kill black people, huh? Uh, well, yeah, sure. <laughs> Doesn't everybody? No, we uh, don't. No, not really. No, no, no none no. of us. Just pigs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know, it, it goes both ways. I have a lot of respect oh, oh. for people, but uh, I, I don't, and I do respect police officers, and I respect their uh, their job, and uh, you know, I don't respect people with disrespect. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really respect, I don't respect the police. Respect people by default, Bill. Yeah, I don't respect people by default. They must earn it first on an individual case by case basis. Very good, Ryan. I don't think anyone could earn your respect. That's not, not true. Right, right. not a lot. Of no. could. Do I have Do I have your respect, Brian? Yes, you do. See, see, Today. Phil. Today. <laughs> well, hey, Kevin. I, I said, I said, it's people. By moment basis, it's not automatic. No, but I agree mm-hmm. with you on a case by case basis. You can respect people, but to say I respect the police, no, no, yeah. I don't respect the police. Well, I've well, done that job, and I have a lot of respect for. It. Well, now, see, I have a little bit more respect for the police officers. Well, okay, we have to stop this. We've got to stop. No, because, see, I do respect the police, but I do not respect 
the racist police officers in any way, shape, or form. And I think the real police officers need to get on the racist ones and get them out of their department. Because there are real cops out there. You know, look how many uh, black officers many departments have across the nation. Uh, you know, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, it was a different story. Uh, it was all a bunch of Irish guys. But now, uh, there, there's a, uh, a lot of uh, police departments are predominantly black officers. And they're also ri- have risen in the ranks to chief and, and, other, and other positions. Do you think that they're going to stand for one minute to have racism thrown in their face? I don't think so. Uh, so I, I, I believe think they go through it on a daily basis. Well, Absolutely. maybe maybe from the citizens, but not not necessarily from the other cops. And uh, you know, when I was doing cop work for twenty years, I didn't see color. These guys were there. I was protecting them. They were protecting me. Uh, there, it's almost it's. Uh, I would imagine it's the same kind of thing that they feel in the military when you're watching your buddy's back, and it has no bearing on the color of their skin or their ethnicity. And uh, so, you know, I, I, got to, I got to experience that firsthand, and I didn't see the racism, racism in, the, in the department. And I was in a department with a lot of black people. Where did that come from? What? We, a box popped up. On my, so, by the way, Skype, Oh, it's the racist box. It's Skype the racist called box. You me, or Skype sent me an email saying you have to update your software. No, you don't. So, no, you don't. I thought you had a Mac. No, you don't. It, I really no. To begin with, it, the, it. I. If you if you read it carefully, it doesn't say they're going to stop. Uh, no, it says I. It just said I needed to update. No, but it, it, did it not doesn't say, that. say they're going to stop. Yeah. Yeah. What it says th- is they're not going to support it any longer. Not I that they they had a Mac. Hmm. I do. So how, I, that's never popped up on mine. No, no, no! It's an actual email. She got, he got, she oh. got an actual email. They, it wasn't a, it wasn't they're, they're a message. They're trying to it do it. I'll tell you, I am on a, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm monitoring a uh, forum that they have on Skype, and the, I think I've gotten maybe a thousand letters that have, you know, notes that have gone to Skype about how bad their new system is, and how they should keep the old one. I mean, and it's like uh, Microsoft isn't paying attention to any of these people have you ever seen have you ever seen these complaint forms that some business have and the there's a there's a barrel you can throw them in that says trash on it no maybe this forum was set up and microsoft never looks at it you know? it could well be okay it's on so, their site um, though it did tell me a note it says uh, we're letting you know that the support for Skype version 7 will end on November 1st of 2018 on the desktop devices on November 15th to mobile and tablet devices. The support will end and you will be required to update to version 8. Although you may not be able to use the older version for a while. Oh, excuse me. You will be able to use the older version for a while. Wow, and we do c- continue there to encourage you, you to go. update. There you go. See? That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah, what they're doing is they're hedging their bets on this one, because uh, it, it, it what they've done. Here's what Apple, what what Skype has done. They've tried to make a Skype that is the same on your desktop as it is on your tablet and on your iPhone. But the fact is that those things don't work with each other. You know, they but they want to make it so they're all compatible. They're all the same. They all work the same. And For uniformity, that's not a bad idea. Uniformity maybe is a good idea, except if it minimizes the uh, the ability of the product. Uh, what the new Skype yes. does is a lot less than the old Skype did. You you have a Skype full the new Skype full house right now. The new I do have the new <laughs> Skype full house. Yes. No, actually, if you have the bubbles at the top, you know you can have up to you can have twenty five bubbles up there. Uh, and, but I'm going to have to sit here, moving them down. But I don't think I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to fight going to the old one l- as long as I can because this looks great. You know, this is a great way to do it. And don't you it, don't you have a bubbles every Tuesday? Yes, I do have a bubbles every <laughs> Tuesday. Yeah. Right. That's, yeah, it's nice to hear about Larry. Yeah, yeah. Nice so, am I just chatting? Hey, okay, so is that an individual chat? Until, so we're getting to learn our Skype. But you know what you never did? You never sent me your phone number. 
Yeah, well, you know, shit happens. Well, I mean, yeah, but no, you were saying to me, I walkie talkied you. I wanted to walkie talkie you, and so I didn't get whatever. Uh, it was in, a Costco day today, so I'm like. In what invite? And so I said to you, just give me your phone number, and I'll just walkie talkie you. Well, you know, instead of walkie talkie, does it do semaphore? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ship, ship well, you know what's te- oh, what's so- stupid about the the t- walkie talkie. Do you remember phones a few years ago that worked? I had a walk- Nextel. Yeah, yeah Nextel. the Nextel. It I did, loved that phone. It did Those that. The yeah, but, but they always worked well. Oh they yeah, were the and, until Sprint bought them, they were great. I had a Nextel 1000. It was a flip phone that, with the walkie yeah. talkie. And Connectivity thing, was wonderful. You, didn't need oh, a phone you know what I just right. you know what I just discovered in like the last couple of weeks. There, Alex is, Bennett is the AirDrop. Yeah, where yeah, I, love where, that. where, where I can be that near if I'm near you with an iPhone, I can take my iPhone and I can go to like pictures and just send one right to your iPhone if you're near me. Yeah, that could be dangerous. No, but that's how I know. But I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and well, so a girlfriend would always say to me, "Oh, so and so, send me, send me Ray Renati's phone number," and I went, "Oh, okay." And then I'd send her an email with the number in it. Instead, I, she was in the room. I could have just taken air the dropped it. air dropped it to her. I do so, pictures all the time. Did yeah. you receive the email information that Apple is about to launch a Skype-like twenty-five person? application no they already have it oh to go up to 25 facetime facetime will let you do that many people yep yep i didn't realize they but, let me do this. but the reason i can't use it is how many people here have uh pcs yeah how many people are using pcs tonight or you know if you're using a pc it's not like apple says okay you can use facetime on a pc yeah no. you know. <laughs> otherwise i'd do it immediately yeah. What's this? Uh, what does Google Plus do? And I understand there was some sort of data breach, and now they finally admitted it, and they're taking it down. Uh, Actually, they're getting rid of it. Yeah, right. Exactly. I don't know what. I don't know what uh, uh, Google Plus was. To be honest, I don't either. I, I I don't know that I had it. I might have, but I. I Ray's I've wife. Never used Ray's it. wife the other day was trying to cool. show me how she uses uh, Google Groups. And it just seems so complicated. I mean, this is so simple. I mean, the one thing I have to say about Skype is how simple it is. That's why I don't know why they either tried to make it simpler and made it more difficult. Because I don't know how many of you here have tried the new Skype, but it's not terribly intuitive. It's on my phone uh, when I uh, put it on the phone. You know, I have I it answer. on the phone, too. You know, yeah. But I don't, I don't use Skype. But it's, it's good for the phone. Huh? It's probably it, good for the phone. Maybe, but, you know, just because it's good for the phone, you should be able to decide well, how you want it. If you maybe want eight people on your screen at a time, I mean, they should have, they should allow you to, to in preferences, set up how you want it to be. But they don't do it. Plus the fact that on my, on my PC, which I'm using here, as I've said before, this picture that people are seeing, I'm able to just uh, uh, grab off of the uh, out of skype and put it directly into my switcher okay whereas with the new skype it won't pick up that picture and i have to use another program to bring in that picture and it's it's just all it's just way too much to have to do one more thing that can go wrong one more thing that can go wrong exactly and that thing will give you a frame and it'll work but it won't work until somebody calls and then it works. It's very strange. Very strange. Oh, uh, have, are you familiar with what a Wacom looks like? A Wacom. Oh, uh, is that what it is? Okay. Yeah. So there's a there's a pen. Uh huh. And uh, and and then you have this uh, thing. And, yeah, and what do you use in. that for? Uh, I use it when I'm uh, in Lightroom when I'm trying to highlight uh, when I use the adjustment brush. And uh, and I'm just carefully uh, working. Maybe uh, if I go eleven to one on the pixels, mm-hmm. I can work pixel to pixel. Yeah. Uh, I have and, Lightroom. Uh, I have Lightroom on my. Um, uh, yeah, it's one of the programs uh, that on comes my, on, on the my, cloud on my iPhone. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. And what, yeah. Do, um, what do I have there? I won't. Uh, I won't show you right now. But uh, it's it's porn. Uh, <laughs> 
Well, it's, it's the pictures that Ann took that I've been looking through and yeah. doing some stuff with. And also, what I have a lot of other... What did they put on the... Well, I, you know why it's so good? Because you, it is, it's a database. So you can, when you import all of her pictures, you can start uh, a, a keywording uh, those pictures so that you can look up all things that had midnight blue. You, know, you could look up uh, all things that had certain celebrities. Uh, you know, so it's it's. Uh, do you know how to keyword in in no? In but but what's happened here is it's also put in just all my photos from my uh, library. I don't want those. Well, you probably okayed that. It, it, it'll ask you if you want that, but you don't want that. Where does it ask that? Uh, probably. Probably when that, you installed it. Yeah. We mean it on the on the computer or on the, my iPhone. Uh, I'm not sure because I never put Lightroom on my iPhone. Where you ever you made your subscription at? So did you do it through iTunes? But I'm guessing that's not where you it, would have done it through. So it has to be your desk. I would think it's your desktop. It's probably my desktop. <laughs> yeah. the spelling. Yeah. You, you it's not so much that it's a Apple intuitive program because it's Adobe, and they don't like each yeah. other. Yeah, yeah, it drives you a little crazy. Uh, let's see, cloud storage and sync. Uh, what is this? Uh, backed up, no available cloud storage. 991 gigabytes. It, 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 I've got 179 photos backed up on their thing, and yet it only used up what? Oh, you know what? Uh, when in Lightroom, you choose. Uh, when you import, you choose where you're going to import it from and where you're going to send it to. Mm -hmm. And so probably uh, what was on your phone was a import uh, it, option. It was a rep maybe it's a representation of what it sees on the on, on the left hand side uh, it, it, on a desktop. Yeah. Uh, there'll be a at the top corner. It'll there'll be a drop down thing where you can say, "Oh, I want to bring it in from my phone. I want to bring it in from my hard drive, uh, or I want to bring it in from my Apple yeah, but library." Why? Why do I have it? Oh, here's import uh, videos. No photos from camera roll. That's it. That's turn that off. I uh, would imagine if you don't want to do that. Okay, let me see what happens now. Well, let me see here. Uh, 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 how do I? I well, I can't. Uh, oh, there we go. No, it's still there. It's still things? there. For my camera so. roll. Yeah, I'm. I'm not familiar with the mobile version. It didn't uh, take all of my pictures. It just took some of them. No, that's not what I wanted. Oh well. Forget I. I have a friend that wrote uh, a book called uh, Creative Workflow in Lightroom, and I'll call him tomorrow and ask him. How, you know what? What's I don't think that's the website. Yeah, but anyway, so the, the, we're we're talking tech here, and to believe it or not, we got quite a few people listening. Uh, yeah. So anyway, so I'm uh, I'm happy with my Apple Watch. Very happy with. It. Well, so now the cellular part is the best part because I went to lunch yesterday and I didn't take my phone with me. I just had my. You didn't cell. have to. Yeah, yep. but then, then I realized. I wanted to take some pictures of our lunch and I couldn't because there's no camera in the Apple Watch. Really? Wow. Yet, yet. You bet that that's got to be the next thing they will put in. Yeah, there. but you, if you had Google again. Glass, oh. if you if you had Google Glass, you could take a picture. They don't have Google Glass anymore. So well, they do, but no, it's they not don't. for consumers. No, they You're don't. They're evil. They're using it in uh, medical. Uh, in the medical field. Oh, really? So every, all the other doctors can laugh at the doctors who are using it? <laughs> yeah, pretty much so. But if, you know, if you're doing something, uh, you can see information and, you know, there, there's a lot they can do with it. But by the way, I started watching, I started watching a show last night because I thought it was the one that my ex-wife uh, mentioned to me, but it may not have been. But it was on Hulu and it's called The, the Resident. Turns out it was on last year, and it's going into its second year now. And it's one of these hospital dramas. But it's better than most hospital dramas. Because oh, it really did. It really, it, huh? What that's you, because it's not on network TV. It is on network TV. Well, it's on Hulu, right? It's, it's on, on Fox. The web, no, like that's, the web -based no I just, Hulu is where I, I get, watch it. But it's a Fox program. It runs on the Fox network. And they deal with things like uh, one episode managed to deal with uh, 
uh, with with uh, basically, you know, the fact that healthcare is very commercial and the hospital doesn't want to pay the two million dollars it's going to take to give an operation to an uninsured person who got sick at their hospital, who also happens to be an illegal immigrant. That only all in he, one. Only that, he's a Democrat. That all in one show, and I thought it was terrific. I thought it was just terrific. Did you, know. you hear about uh, the DMV, uh, that they just found that the DMV incorrectly registered a number of illegal aliens to vote? <laughs> but I, you I, know I, what? That's voter registration. Big deal. Once you get the database, you can clean that out in a heartbeat. Oh, by the way, Phil, did you see the latest at Better Call Saul? Yes. Uh, I, oh, wait a minute. Let's make sure we're not going to spoil it for anybody. I don't give a shit. If you haven't seen it, fuck you. Okay, yes. You know? uh, now, my uh, my question is, yeah. what are they going to do with that hole now that uh, well, the that, German that, guys that have? I don't know. I, that I don't know. But what we found what, out what at the, the hole end. For? No, what we found out at the end was how he got the name oh, Saul Goodman. The phones? No. He turns around to her and looks at him and says, Saul Goodman. Oh, Really? Yeah. Now, uh, this is the episode I just saw that had uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, library yeah. that he put on the... Uh, he, he yeah, donated yeah, 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 okay. yeah. But at the very end, he turns around to her and she says, so what are you going to do? He says, it's all son good, of, man. Son of a bitch, I know I stopped it too soon. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'll have to go back he to get, the last he gets five his, He gets his legal lawyer's license. And the last, she, she says something like, you know, what do you, what do you mean? What are you going to do? Are you going to get a new name or whatever? And she, he looks at her and goes, Saul Goodman. Yeah, well, I thought that they didn't give him the lawyer's license and he was doing all no, of these things no. to yes. and get the, it. You didn't watch the end of the show where he gets his license back? I guess not. I guess you didn't. Okay, well, I'll watch it. You know, I, it, it's not a spoiler. I mean, I, I, I'm glad he did. We, we knew that at the end of the season, he was going to metamorphosize into Saul Goodman. But just, we never figured out where that name came from. And he says, Saul Goodman. Well, I thought when he was dealing the burner phones, when he, when he was selling the burner phones. He, called himself, start... Saul, he called himself Saul Goodman. But right. The reason he picked it is he looked at her and went, Saul Goodman. <laughs> oh, okay. Very good. Was this the final episode of the season? Yeah. Oh, son of a bitch. And you didn't yeah. watch the last 10 minutes of it. You prick. No, I guess not. You idiot. <laughs> okay. You well, moron. I'll go back and watch you it. Are the it's on demand. You are the moron we all believe you are. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah. It, well, it was a good show. You know, I thought it was over when uh, when he shot the uh, German guy. Well, don't tell everybody that. That's a that's a you know, that's a spoiler. But, but that wasn't the that wasn't the end <laughs> of the getting show. his law license back is not a spoiler. But that wasn't the end of the show. <laughs> no, well, that's what I thought it was. No, I was that wasn't the end of the show. You had about ten minutes more to go. You idiot. Well, I was watching it on demand, so when it's on demand, you don't know what time, you know, you All can't you just look at your watch and say, when you're looking on demand, you up. just put, put, put your, uh, your paws on and you can see how many more minutes you've got left. Ah, okay. Okay. Well, I, I was watching it. Uh, well, what, actually, as I Bugs Bunny would night. say, what a maroon. Yeah. Well, I, when I was watching it, I fell asleep. And so then I try to watch it again this afternoon, and uh, I got busy, and then I came home and I watched it, and that's when I thought it was Well, watch over. the last ten minutes. Yeah. Okay. Oopsie. That was a... That's when he goes in and gives his plea to this committee. Oh, geez. Okay. That's fantastic. Yeah. 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 So, and then he gets his license back. All and right. he so says... So his scam works. He says to them, he says to them... Uh, well, we all knew pretty much he was going to get his license back. He had a br he had a letter from his brother that yes. he pulled out of a book. Yes, that's and he says I'm going to let my brother speak for me. Yeah, yeah, that's all part right. of it. That's part right. of it. Okay, but then again, it isn't. But you'll find out. Okay. Uh, anyway, he uh, but no, but he the woman says to him, "We have good news for you." He says, "Yeah, I know, I I got it right." And she says, "Yeah," she says, "Come into the office and you have to sign some papers." Uh, uh, so we can reinstate you as a lawyer. And he says, yeah, and also I want to sign a DBA, doing business as. I want to change my name to do business as somebody else. And they said, fine. 
And so she, he's walking in. She says, what are you going to do? He says, it's all good, man. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. So yeah. it's a good show. It's a good show. A very good show. Yeah. Uh, and if it gets, it's, of course, picked up for next year. And if it gets picked up the year after that, it will actually have lasted longer than Breaking Bad. Yeah. Which was a great show. It's a great show. I, I, I don't know. I don't realize how long it took me to sit down and watch Breaking Bad. I, I had no idea what it was about. We watched I just every out- episode every day that we had the chance. And what we did is we timed it. So we got up right up to the day they broadcast the final episode. Yeah. And the only <laughs> thing that was disappointing about that was was that uh, uh, when we watched it, it had commercials, and all the things we had been watching didn't. <laughs> it, uh, where's some kind of hiss coming in here? Uh, I don't know. I, could be my I have my air conditioner on. Uh, well, it's Hawaii. you got to have an air conditioner on. Yeah, yeah no shit. Yeah, that was, it's hot again today. That, that was hey, it. so Iron Man is this weekend, if anybody's interested. What do you mean Iron Man? Uh, the the triathlon Iron Man is going to be this weekend, running right past my house. Ah, oh, damn it! I missed it. Yeah, yeah boy. I was I, gonna I, sign up for that. Yeah, night. when was the no, registration? Yeah, you, were, you were gonna you were gonna do it. I didn't get the memo. Damn it! <laughs> right, right. Hey, I heard back from my cardiologist. Yeah. Hey, aunt, what did he say? Uh, they said um, that I'm fine and that uh, I'm normal. He says congratulations. It, it's normal. So, you know, I, I wrote him back today and I said, why uh, do, is there a blip in my EKG that made everybody go, as Alex would say, apoplectic? Mm-hmm. And uh, so uh, they haven't answered me yet. And I said, and does this mean I'm cleared to scuba dive? So, we'll, we'll Oh, see. yeah, you're going to have to get that signed off. Yeah. Yeah, they're not going to let you down with that. Good point. Well, you know, I could lie, but, uh, you know, I, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not going down. So, Kev, may I change the subject? Sure. Yeah. Kevin, tell us about it. Tell us what happened. What's that? Tell us what you won. Tell us what happened. Oh, well, I got uh, I got best of show for my pretzel buns at the San Benito County Fair. Really? Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. My buns won. Your buns won. <laughs> Wow, that's terrific. I had everybody looking at my buns this weekend. Really? <laughs> and grading them and tasting now, now, them and Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, this yeah. was where again? Were tasting this, my buns? This was where again? I'm so domestic. At what? the county fair. At the county fair. Which which yeah. county fair? San, uh, San Mateo? San Benito. San Benito County Fair. And a bunch of Okies out and, here. You and, know? and you won for best best buns? Uh Pretzel buns, yes. Pretzel it was buns. a class of uh, yeast rolls, you know, uh-huh. and, and I and I made them. Got up at six o'clock now, was in the morning. It, it, was it, it wasn't in, what, wasn't in a category called pretzel buns, was it? It was in a category of breads and yeast made items. I guess they'd call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stilly one. That's great. No, that's uh, terrific. Yeah, I now, beat out a bunch of old ladies, man. They were all pissed off at me. <laughs> Santa Claus beat up the old ladies. Huh? <laughs> hey, they were all looking at me nasty when I went to pick up my ribbon. Did what? you wear the red outfit Kevin, when uh, Kevin, don't uh, you, when that. you did the presentation? Hey, what's that, uh, Brian? You, uh, Brian, Brian, and, uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin, don't feel too badly. Those old ladies are just showing you their cum faces. Oh, <laughs> oh. I, oh, oh. Where did that come from? Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, intended. Yeah. Answer your question: Where did that come from? Every time somebody gives me a dirty look, that's what I'm tempted to say to them. Oh, are you showing me your cum face? You know, <laughs> you say that a lot. Then, <laughs> well, you know, the mad. nice, the nice way of, of putting it would be O oh, face. Oh damn it! You know. face or whatever, but you get my point. Now, here's my question. I have and a I, que- and I, I submitted. Well, I have a question here, photos. And, and this okay. is going to get Renee. Not agitated, but it'll get her really active here. Who are better cooks, men or women? I don't think it's got a gender issue. I think it, I think, I think, it, I, I think it does. Most of the no. Are. See, you, you're so that goes back to black people can't swim because you've never no, seen a black can't, person. They can't ski. 
Yeah, okay, so women <laughs> women aren't most chefs aren't women because women weren't allowed to be out cook outside the house. So saying that that statement that you made has no, got but but they but they the women Alec women Alec they asked. they may have not in, at one point not cooked that much out of the house, but they did cook in the house. And the question is, there were they better cooks than men? Well, it was Julia think- Childs. And uh, Alex, uh, how does Julia Childs make a leek salad? No, first you take a leek. That's uh, right. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think it makes a difference. I, I, I would find it hard pressed to believe that baking, excuse me, that cooking in any way, shape, or form, and that includes baking and grilling and whatever else you want to put, has a gender bias attached to it. I'll tell you, though, I think there is a gender difference. And, I, and I'm going to explain a few of the things. The way a woman cooks as opposed to the way a man cooks. Women cook by, if, they, if it says one teaspoon of salt, they measure out one teaspoon of salt. You know, whereas a male cook never measures out salt. He simply puts it in what he thinks is the proper amount, and then he tastes it to see if it's any good. And if it isn't, he adds a little more salt, or he adds a little more pepper, he adds a little more. Guys are far more uh, loose about how they do a menu, how they do a a recipe. Kevin, did you find that true when you're winning uh, pretzel buns? Is that how you Yeah, because my wife was all over me because it was humid. And she was telling me, she kept saying, you know, that the, the, the bread's going to rise weird. It's going to be stickier. It's going to be this. And I'm going, w- w- what difference does it make? And she said, well, it's going to be a different con- you know, texture and this and that and the other thing. And I'm going, well, I don't know because it's, not, it's never been any different before when I made it. So if it's going to be different, I'm not going to know what's different. I think so altitude. if it happens, it happens, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm just going to go with it. Kevin, isn't it the water and the altitude that has to do with how the bread rises? So, for instance, it if is, you try is. to cook yeah. something at Lake Tahoe where you're at 8,000 or 5,000 yeah. feet elevation, it's different than when you're at sea level. Yeah, but yeah, we're but talking, the, the, I was at 800 feet or whatever we are right. here. He wasn't it, talking about humidity. He was actually talking, or he wasn't talking about altitude. He was no. talking about the actual weather. Yeah, it just happened yeah, but, to be raining that day. Right. But I, but what I said was is that those things will, will uh, affect. Yeah, because that affects yes. boiling and all that other stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think the humidity is going to affect it because it's in an oven. You know, what kind of humidity can you have? Yeah, well, it might affect rising. You know, I don't know. But yeah, it, so it's, it's, it's so true, you have though, to but it's it a little sit, bit looser. Though. I feel like I'm a little bit looser. I'll, I won't stick to uh, exact amounts of salt and that sort of thing. If it goes a little bit over, I don't worry about it. If it goes a little bit under, eh, all right, I'll put a little bit more in, you know. I, I, don't, I don't think I don't, this is a male or female. I'm not that thing. close. I, I think it might have something to do with the level of experience. I you think, know, I, I think that men, could be too. as chefs, are more experimental than most women in cooking. They're more precise. Women are more precise in how they stick to a recipe. But, but, okay, I never, so I never, I very the seldom, rating. I will look at a, a recipe, okay, to see what has to go in there. And then it'll say, put in so much of this. And I go, no, nah, no, nah, I'm going to put more of this in. Or I'm going to put less of that in. Uh, and, and, and not really follow the actual measurement thing. And yeah, when you're pouring the vanilla, you let stuff run over the edge. You don't care. Yeah, exactly. And if there's too much, there's always a way you can water it down, or there's yeah. always a way you can make more. At least that's uh, the way I work. But yeah. I find, like, when I make a beef bourguignon, for instance, I put far more wine in it than it says. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's always and, and I, uh, 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 you know, add far more mushrooms than I'm supposed to, and, uh, uh, you know, a lot of pearl onions. And, you know, I mean, I don't sit there and go, oh, it says use one can of, of this or one can of that or a, a can of uh, tomato paste. Hell, I put in double the tomato paste. Well, oh, yeah, care. when it comes to garlic, I'll dump a couple extra yeah, cloves exactly. in automatically. But, oh, says the person that lives next door to Gilroy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got extra around here. Let's start it. I just, I just looked up the, the best meal I've ever had. I had at this uh, restaurant called Louis the, uh, the 15th. And it has three Michelin stars. What's the most amount of Michelin stars you can get? 
I uh, think I think it's been five. I think it's five. It's, I think very rare. Yeah. Very rare. Yeah, this so, guy's got restaurants all over the world. Is Alan Ducasis? And, okay. Uh, so here's Michelin. the deal about Michelin restaurants. As a matter of fact, a Michelin restaurant gave away, gave back their Michelin star rating. With Michelin restaurants, you have to make a set course of me a preset course of meals and it has to be made precisely so that it can be replicated over the entire year those exact same ingredients at that exact same flavor at those exact same taste that's how you win a michelin star and Isn't that those like people- mcdonald's no, those yeah, McDonald's people, should win by that uh, that <laughs> yeah. those people don't fuck with without doing their measuring they don't say oh a little splash of vanilla extra no they don't do that because those meals have to be precise because they have to taste a particular way so those chefs are different from i think i think you're wrong about the way i think you're wrong i think you're wrong about the way michelin judges that yeah i'm not sure how they do i'm think i think they go by the quality of the meal the uh, uh, the unusual quality of the meal, the experimentation, the the, uh, uh, the you know how different it is, uh, they go through for a lot of things, you know, uh, and and how much each meal tastes like a tire, so you know. And what happens if you use Pirellis? If you use Pirellis, uh, you immediately get disqualified. <laughs> So I'm using Wikipedia, and every time I use Wikipedia, I have to tell you that I'm using Wikipedia. Why? Um, because anybody can the write law. Wikipedia it, it, it just shit. Just fake it. Just fake it and seem smart. Yeah, no. Yeah. I don't care. I don't keep this in my head that much. Yeah. Uh, three stars is all yeah. I'm seeing. Is is their highest rating? Is, is the third really? star? Oh, okay. Really? Uh, yeah. yeah, this place was called uh, Louis the Fifteenth. It's at the Hotel du Paris in, in Monaco, and uh, it was spectacular. And of course, my kids didn't want to eat much of anything, uh, you know. But uh, you know, it came out. Well, we don't like this. We don't like that. It was it was unbelievable. Yeah, no, I thought they had to make precise meals precisely the way that it's required to be made, and they have to continuously make them that way until their star rating disappears. And that's why somebody recently gave back their star rating, because they were tired of making the same meals you know, they, all the they, time, they, and they, they couldn't be creative. They gave, so they well, gave back their stars well, and said, they, screw I that, think, I think we want to be now, original. Yeah. The, the, in 2006, the, the chef at this restaurant said that uh, I do most of the cooking in my head. That 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 was his quote. This Alan Ducasis, uh, it, because the, the it says that it was a five star restaurant and a three star Michelin. Uh, oh, they removed the star. Michelin removed the star from Louis the fifth. Uh, Louis the fifteenth says uh, I do most of the cooking in my head. Uh, I, I can't get the rest of the thing to show. Maybe more results. No. I don't know. And, and also, I'm a little less, when I cook, I use that attitude more when I'm using a cooktop, so open flame. When I bake, I don't, I don't get away from the recipe at all when I bake. Baking is a little tighter, yeah. I have to admit that. Because if you don't have the right amount of stuff in there to make it rise, you're fucked. Yes, exactly. So baking, I, I don't. I don't experiment. I just go right to the rules. But if I'm cooking something else, like a pasta or something like that, I'll I'll fudge. Yeah. Uh, there, there are. Uh, let me see here. Uh, there are how many? There are three. Uh, uh, there are how many restaurants in New York City that have uh, that many? San Francisco. It says here. Uh, per se, Le Bardin, Maza, Maza, uh, Brooklyn Fair, and Eleven Madison Park. Uh, that I believe. I'm trying to remember who did Eleven Madison. That's uh, I think that's Danny. Uh, oh, what's his name? Um, if Marjorie were here, she could tell me. Yeah, 
Uh, you have? I, no, I haven't eaten at any of them, but uh, I, I'd, I'd like to try 11 Madison Park. It's nearby. They had got three stars. Uh, hey, Jeff, can you tell me if I'm wrong about the Michelin rating? No, I wouldn't know. Oh, okay. Uh, by the way, uh, Love you, dinner menus <laughs> in most of these places are three and four hundred dollars, service included. Uh, yeah, that, that's uh, yeah. There was uh, four adults and two children, and when I did it in two thousand three or two two thousand two, it was a thousand euros, and and only I drank. Oh, well, <laughs> Jesus! So that was when did you do that? So it was like two thousand three or two thousand two. So it, and that was when we were at the twenty twenty five percent, yeah. So that was like a thousand and two hundred, yeah, about twenty five hundred dollars. No, it was uh, it was like a dollar thirty, I think. To yeah, the... there was time there when it was really hard to go to Europe. It's, yeah. it's hard now. Well, it was but... the other way around. The the you, it was a dollar cost you a dollar thirty to uh, you had to pay to get one euro. Yeah. So Jeff, you were just in Europe. How how what was the exchange rate then? Painful or not painful? Um, you know, we didn't spend a lot of money. I hate to tell you, it was kind of like the whole thing was pre-planned uh, <laughs> for a lot of things. And, and like when we went out one night, and all of us we cooked our own dinner oh. at a with a chef. Oh, cool. Yeah, that was fun. So, did he correct you, or did he, like, just enjoy the vibe? Uh, no, that pretty much. It was a lady, and she pretty much uh, gave us directions. Oh, okay. And, and on what to, to make. And, I mean, she added, do you like this or not like this? But pretty much she had a plan. Now, by the way, when it comes to female chefs, uh, Alice Waters is probably one of the finest oh, in the Berkeley. world. Yeah. Yeah, uh, there's. Uh, you ever Shea heard Panace. of the Essex in New York? What? The Essex? Never heard. Yeah, of it. that was. We've all uh, heard of the Essex. It's a big Essex, Essex House. The Essex. Oh, the Essex House. That's it's a hotel. It's know. a hotel. Uh, well, uh, yeah. The, this Alan Ducasis has a restaurant, a three-star restaurant there in New York, 155 oh. West 58th. Oh, crap. Uh, uh, well, Renee, the next time you come to New York, you can take me out to dinner on one of those places. Sure. Can I take your wife too, though? Sure. Excellent. All right. Sure, she would do that for sure. <laughs> cool. The Essex House Restaurant. Uh, let me see. Uh, here. Alan Ducasis at the Essex House. Yeah. Well, and yeah, you're yeah. also assuming that there's no female sous chefs at these three-star restaurants. Really? How's that possible? How is there no female sous chefs under this guy? Oh, and did you see Brett Kavanaugh hired a whole bunch of women, and one of them is probably Zena Bash? D Dina Bash? D I think it's Dana Bash or Dana. Dina. Isn't she a commentator? No, you're getting the two mixed up yet again. Oh. And I think that, so the problem is, is I think the TV person is a blonde, but the Z the person, the Bash person we're talking about is a long-haired, uh, dark-haired, long oh. dark hair. So I, the only way you're going to have to remember it that way. Yes, it did work. Thank you. Okay. Let me see here. It doesn't say anything about three stars for the Essex House. Yeah, it's, uh, well, I'm, I'm looking at a, in an article here. It shows all his restaurants, and he has uh, one at the Essex House uh, on uh, But that doesn't mean it's a three star. Oh, it says it's three stars in this article. And this is from the Independent uh, in, U in the UK. So, Jeff, you were there when the bridge crashed. Is that correct? Yeah. But he wasn't in that Chris, part of the country. Chris, I was country. way on the other end of Italy. Right. Can you what What do you remember? Because we have a lot of bridges built in this in 1960 in this country. Yes, we build lots of bridges, but we do a pretty good job. They decided that they could. Uh, save a lot of money and so the materials were inappropriate and i think a lot of people were were uh getting the money instead of getting the steel what, what, uh, what's happening here brian are you sending pictures out to people 
No, Kevin yeah. put his buns. Check out on my Skype. buns, baby. Wait a minute, let me, Kevin, let me see here. Let's do this. Kevin's buns are on Skype. Let's Everybody do that, click folks. On the there, chat. Well, there, there's uh, Kevin showing our in, citizen. Yeah, panel. in the bottom left-hand corner of the chat uh, or of the Skype, you'll have a, a little box with the script on it, and if you click on that, you can see Kevin's buns. Award-winning buns. buns, right? Is that your ribbon? Best in show. Wait a minute. Oh, there they are, folks. Yep. There it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there they I, I get those at Whole Foods. Congratulations. <laughs> Not those, baby. Yep. Those are my buns. There are his buns, folks. Boy, those look nice. Yeah, they look really nice. But those aren't so, pretzel uh, buns, though, are they? Hamburger buns? Yeah. Uh, th yeah that's those what are you say about that size. Those yeah. are pretzel buns? I like throwing oh. brisket on them. Oh, Alex, brisket. I sent you the article for on that uh, yeah. on that restaurant. Yeah. Brisket would be really good on those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hamburgers are good on those. What's the calorie count on one of those bad boys, though? You don't want to know. No idea. God damn it. <laughs> All right. Well, figure that one out because real people eat carbs, too. Yeah, I got to take two <laughs> glipizides to eat one of those things. Yeah, I think you do. <laughs> <laughs> But they look great. And did you sprinkle? Is that crushed salt? And did you go? Did you go with the Himalaya pink salt, or did it's you go with sea salt? Yes, just sea salt. Okay. Because you know Red, Costco, Red Sea. There they Red are sea again, salt. folks. I'm showing it to the audience here. So they Costco know. sells the pink sea salt. Now you can just get it for Costco for cheap. I had some, but I didn't know. I didn't want to take the chance. Oh, good. I, I, I thought use maybe the old ladies would get salt. mad and throw me out. There I want go. masculine sea salt. None of this pink stuff. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's it. Yeah. Anyway, so I can. It's funny. I've I've never shown people the uh, the uh, comment side here. Those, those are nice. Those are, now were those the bagel ones or was that another? Bun? No, those those are pretzel buns. Yeah. Those are pretzel. Oh, buns. You, oh, you cook them almost like a bagel. Yeah. The pretzel gotta, buns. No, but they don't look like. But they don't. They don't look. They don't look like pretzels. But they taste like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They taste They're like zin tight. Mm. Look, Alex had a real sneeze. Congratulations. Mm. Oh, really? Is that a real sneeze? Yeah, that was. Instead of. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you really sneezed. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Oh, Jeff, what you should you let do? them. You should sneeze because if you yeah. hold it back, you know you blow vessels in your brain. Well, I yeah. was told that if you that you can't sneeze without closing your eyes. So we tested we tested terrible. that once, and I, think I, 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 I took some. I smelled some pepper, and then I held my eyes like this, and I'm sorry. It, your eyes are stronger than your fingers. You it, now. It, Mm. They did. Is it, it similar? Right? Is it similar to doing what they call a valsalva, where you hold your nose and then you uh, you you blow out, so you equalize your ears? No, is, is no, that, no, no, no. Is this is this, is, this is just that when you sneeze, you close your eyes automatically. It's wow. A, it's not a kind of like a shark. It's not a reflex. It's part of the sneeze. I I think, but. So if you're, how many times have you been driving down the road, you started sneezing and you kind of worried yeah. because you couldn't see that well as you were sneezing. I can't see that well when I'm not and sneezing. No, and isn't sorry. it true that your heart stops for a beat as well? Really? Is that true? That's what, I, that's what I've heard because, you know, they used to tell us that stuff from when I was driving truck. What was the one that if you fart you start getting sneeze? into a big old sneeze and, you know, because I used to follow, I used to follow uh, hay trucks and I was, I had hay fever. Out in the Central Valley. Well, what did they and say? I'd get behind a hay truck and I'd go nuts. If, if, if they <laughs> tell me you, to pull over. <laughs> they used to say if you fart and belch at the same time, you'll die. Yeah, that's bullshit. <laughs> no, now they tell us. Now they tell us. You, now they tell us you never trust a fart. <laughs> that's, uh, Why does it never, tell you things? Yeah, because oh, yeah. Kavanaugh said it was a boof. Yeah, that's right. We yeah. call him Bart now. We don't call him Brett or whatever his name is. Bart the boofer. How yeah. about uh, uh, Your Honor? Honor. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's pretty sad, isn't it? Honor? No, I don't think so. By the way, did you? I mean, I, I don't. We've gone most of the, uh, the show without about hearing. Stupid. hearing no, we talked about farts. Here, we've been talking. Here's about some it. of some of uh, here's some of Phil's uh, insane ideas about politics. But uh, did you see Justice Roberts the other night when uh, he was doing that? Uh, what we call uh, 
Republican rally at the White House when they swore him in. Roberts didn't look happy. Roberts looked very miffed by the whole process. I think he didn't like the show that was going on, that he feel, felt it wasn't uh, dignified for the Supreme Court. Yeah, I don't think he felt it enough. I don't think it was uh, uh, Kavanaugh that created the uh, undignified situation. Oh. No, no, Kavanaugh oh. was oh, there yes. for he an was interview. Very, he was very, we all he, watched him explode in yeah, his interview. That was real dignity. Yeah, that was real so hey, you can if, just if people there we go here we go accused, we've avoided it all night of being a gang rapist i would have exploded at well those i still believe too. he's a gang he, rapist. He, nobody accused him of being a gang rapist number yeah. one and number two lindsey graham asked him you don't who who thinks that that was a stellar interview that was that was that was not that wasn't even a question he just i think he just, I think what you miss is it rallied the Republicans, and they finally saw that he and and Lindsey Graham has balls. Couldn't believe it. I didn't think Lindsey Graham, uh, you know, had a had had a personality, let alone uh, somebody who would charge against the injustice that was happening. Well, watch it. Uh, uh, watch it. Watch it. Watch who's going to be the new UN, uh, the new UN representative. Say that again, Alex. Watch who's going to be the new UN representative. Oh, it's uh, the, yeah, the oh, first no. Lindsey Graham. He was auditioning. No, no, uh, he, he has, has to stay job. in the Senate. He has yeah. to stay in the Senate. So, but let's go. I want to put money on Ivanka or Jared. No. For the yeah, event. that's what I was thinking too. Yep. Okay, no, so we got three so. people going: Ivanka, Jared. What about you, Jeff? He. Uh, there was somebody mentioned. Uh, I really can't. I can't consider it. There was another woman uh, yeah. that was mentioned. Could, that could, something could happen. Yeah. Well, three so far. Or, yeah, three I of us think, think I believe, longer, I believe there is a law against that. And no, the, no, there, why? no, there why? is no. After Bobby Empathism. Kennedy, after Bobby Kennedy became uh, uh, Attorney General, they yeah. made a law that the President of the United States cannot have blood kin uh, in his cabinet, and that is a cabinet post. The we'll UN is a cabinet post? Yes, it is. Okay. I don't believe. All right. So, hang on. So, so it, 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 that's not going to happen. Uh, you know uh, what I think it. might happen? I think Nikki Haley is going to end up running with Trump as VP in 2020. Oh, uh, that would be... Yep. Fuck, fuck it all. I bet you that uh, Pence is going to say, hey, you know, uh, it's been four years. It's been fun. Uh, thank you very much. I bet you Nikki Haley is going to be the next VP. I bet Trump doesn't run. Uh, I think he likes. I, I think Stop his, thinking he's staying. I think his health will preclude it. By the way, did anybody see? Plus, uh, did anybody, it's hard to become president when your wrists are all wrapped up. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Uh, yeah. Did you? Uh, did anybody right. here see the Showtime special the New York Times did on Trump's finances? No. They did a what? Wait, I'm sorry. I thought I had to read it. It's on, no, it's on Showtime. They did a Showtime. Uh, Showtime yeah. followed the reporters around for like 15, 20 months, something like that, as they were trying to to get this story, and they finally then got all the papers and things like that. It's oh, a they released his tax return. No, 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 no. You don't this know about this whole New dad. York Times thing about no. just how how they they uh, they avoided paying taxes by by sheltering the money in ways that is totally illegal. That. That's totally illegal. Uh, they gifted it uh, or something, and uh, sure. yeah, I heard that. Uh, is there a statute of limitations on that? No, I don't think so. <laughs> this was 1999. No, there's not not that. I don't think so, there's actual limitations. And, and let's talk about this because I'm like just, I was, so fuck off people. Let's just start at the beginning of the sentence is he wasn't given $1 million from his dad to fuck up. 112. Was, yeah. No, but that's today's money. So it doesn't matter. It, no, no, it? no, that's what no, the, no, no, Phil, Phil, money. Phil. It, but 1999, it, wait a minute, Phil, it been, wasn't it, in today's it was money. It wasn't no, no, in no, today's money. No, the, the no. million was a loan. If, if your parents are 
giving you that kind of money. Don't you think you that's, shouldn't that's fuck what up he, that That's what they inherited. But the no, million no, was a loan no. so to get into to, business. No, 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 no. You, ha- you got to have to watch the show because the only thing I saw things. is... No, 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 no. There was much more than that that he was given. No, when he According to them, they saw what he got yeah. in that supposed borrowing, and it was far more than $1 million. It was more like $43 million. Yes. In today's money, maybe. No, not in today's money. In money then. Yes, Jeff. Phil, that's what he got when he won his bar mitzvah. Bar mitzvah. <laughs> yeah. You know, all I got was uh, savings bonds. 13. And, 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 and those, those $50 and $25 savings no, bonds he, you had to hang on to for seven years before they were worth $25. Trump said that was the money. It was gifted me at my bar mitzvah. And then they said, but you're not Jewish. And he said, I am now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean. <laughs> right answer. Very good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, no, it, 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 go watch the documentary, Phil. It's on Showtime. I know you don't want to, but go watch it. It, it, well, it, shows, how they, it. it shows how they did a bunch of funneling of the money to a, there was a, sh- uh, a, a corporation. But this is the, the failing New York okay, Times. Okay, here's Trump and his, and his brother and sister uh, yes, had, a, had a, a company, and I can't remember the name of it now, but what they did is, for instance, they would buy a boiler for say Mm $10,000 and they would sell it to their father for $40,000. Well, that's reasonable. No, it's not reasonable. Well, I'll tell you why it's not even legal. Not when their father could, not when their father could have gone out and bought it for 10,000. There are people that build homes and they buy a carpet company because they use a lot of carpet. So as a carpet company, you can buy from the mill wholesale. If you're building the home, you cannot buy from the mill wholesale. You have to be a dealer. Get so him, all I'm saying is his father could have gone Get directly him, to the Hurts. boiler company and bought it, but it was a method. It was a m- and not pay the taxes. Yeah. Well, how do you know he didn't pay the taxes? He did. Oh, maybe he had a lot of expenses. He didn't. Go watch the documentary, Phil. You'll sit there What's and you'll go. What's it called, Alex? What's it called? Uh, I'm it, it's, so it's, happy. It, uh, it's called, I think, Trump's Trump t- and his taxes or something like that. It's on Showtime. You can't Just miss it. The, I am so happy that I didn't Times. have to read all of that stuff. So thank you very much for telling us. Yeah, supposedly. Because I did not want to slug through that yeah, shit. It was I want to see it. It was 40 pages that they <laughs> printed. Yeah, I don't, that's... I don't, yeah. I don't take Showtime, but I'll find a way to get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can find it somewhere. It's hey, really. I have good. a secret. What? So you know how we're oh, we're up on YouTube often, and they've been telling us about you know joy. Look at us. It's YouTube TV. Come come over here and look at us. Yeah. yeah. Look at us. Well, guess what? I get to see. I get to see every baseball game that's being broadcast, and that means that I paid. MLB $139 to not see one Giants game all year. I'm paying you. I'll be paying YouTube $35 to see almost everything. Is that the YouTube Red or something? Yep. So what it is is it's those all of the contracts, and I'm going to get in trouble because once they figure out that this isn't how it goes, so YouTube is showing me all of the MLB uh, games. You two is showing me all of the football games. Well, I've I heard that, yeah. I've heard that with the football, now, too. Alex, now, when you're blacked out in an area for a sports game or, or something like that, mm-hmm. with this VPN, can I say that I'm in Canada or yeah. uh, Mexico yes. Yes. and then get the game that's yes. blacked out? Yes. What I've seen is you don't need to. Go do the free yeah. trial on YouTube on YouTube TV and see if you can't get that sporting event that you were trying to figure out. Because yeah. all of my sporting, or the bulk of the sporting events here for West Coast are all blacked out. But once I started that trial offer with YouTube, I just go on YouTube yeah. and I can see all the baseball games, all the football games. Well, yeah, I already spent the off. ninety. I spent the right. oh, wait, 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 Kevin, for three Kevin years. listen to Kevin. Kevin has a friend who did oh. this. What? Yeah. yeah. Uh, my cousin cut off direct TV and does the same thing with uh, fo- football. See, I'm worried they're going to figure out that it's not a contract thing and they're going to yank it. That's why I didn't want to yeah. tell anybody. You have a VPN? Yeah. I don't need one. No, you it's don't YouTube. need it. You just turn it on and it's there. 
Go to YouTube and then click on where it says do your free trial for YouTube I already, TV. I already did the free trial. They got me with Karate Kid. Oh, okay. So <laughs> go up and look for a specific, a particular uh, sporting event and put it in there and see if you can't find so it. You, but you, Do you get the hockey games? Uh, well, I do now. If you get the hockey games, I'm well, sold. Time to stand. <laughs> so you should because every restricted shit that I was getting black screen for – I can see it on YouTube okay. TV. Stop talking now. Stop talking. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm there. I'm like there. <laughs> so but everybody why, should try. Why would you think that know. it's not allowed? Why, why would you think it's not why, why would you think because it's, it's too allowed. good to be true? <laughs> oh. it, well, so MLB has contracts with tele, to televise games. I have no idea how YouTube is getting around those contracts with to televise those games. Because it's a special service. They're selling the red uh, service. YouTube, what is it, $14 YouTube, a month? YouTube, probably. No, uh, YouTube, uh, to begin oh. with, uh, YouTube is Google. Google has more money than God. They probably mm -hmm. paid a terrific amount of money to the football league and to the baseball people and said, we want to carry all your games. Well, shit, then everybody should know this. Go to YouTube television and you don't have any more blacked out games. Well, right. I would imagine I would imagine they're paying for them and I imagine they have the 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 bucks to pay for it. You know, how, that's, how much that's could their, they, that's how? their sell point nowadays. That's what all these guys are doing. The YouTubes and the the Roku's and Netflix. all that are all saying cut the cord with the these satellites and cables. Well, but we I'm sure. I'm sure. For instance, I know that they're not paying this much, but if they had to pay baseball, let's say just for grins, a billion dollars, which they're not, okay, clearly not, but a billion dollars or half a million dollars. Do you know what that is to Google? It's like a piss in the fucking ocean. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Oh, well, I'm hoping that it's all good. So, you heard it uh. here. First, you can get your black. Well, that's kind of that's kind of like the way the cables all started out. They had you know free reign. You could you could do everything, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden they slowly started cutting them off and rewriting contracts and everything else. You know, so yeah. Back in the, the day, I had one of those cable right boxes. I had, a, I had I had one of those cable boxes that uh, you could get every channel. Oh yeah, you get the cards, and then ones. you get cards rewritten and everything else, and you could get them rewritten by your neighbor and all that shit. Yeah. Oh no, this was older than that. This was from the '80s, early '80s. Yeah. And uh, you know, you just had a box, and they did something to the board, and uh, all of a sudden you were able to get every every yeah. channel known to man. Yeah. yeah, you should try it. Everybody try it this weekend on all the wild sporting events. And it would be nice, Alex, if you can get Marjorie to test it with her tennis because Marjorie's our only tennis tester. Uh, I think she's our I only tennis person. Here. I don't think Alex watches many sport events. Well, <laughs> no, you're not interesting me in YouTube Red at all here. <laughs> well, go to go to movies then. Look up movies. Yeah. Look up something. Yeah, look up something that's. Uh, you know, some some awesome well, I, I have so another the karate Alex will be kid the movie remake. guy. I, I don't want to. I don't want to say you anything. Be the baseball. You be the. Yeah, we'll all look up something and see how but it works. I have another way of getting movies. So you know, I yeah, don't need. Yeah, but you need go to YouTube. Torrid. Huh? Right? No, he's a member of the. Sag. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. See, I had, I yeah, had yeah, yeah. That's the I way I get the movies. The yeah, I'm SAG way. after. That's the way I get the movies. Yeah. <laughs> I had an unlocked fire stick, but you had to keep it updated, and I couldn't figure out how to update it. So it got. It got what do you mean the unlocked fire stick? What did that do? Yeah, it, it got all kinds of stuff, but it got stale, and I couldn't update it. My my kid gave it to me, and I couldn't figure out how. Tony to had it. that, supposedly. Huh? Tony had, he had, an he had a fire stick? stick. I don't know yeah. if it was unlocked. It was on unlocked. Facebook. Yeah. Well, Supposedly it was unlocked. Yeah. Yeah, my, my kid gave it to me. He used to do it, but he never did it for me again. And I said, You look punk, why don't you update it for me? He says, Let's just go online and do it. <laughs> what does a fire oh, stick yeah, look like? Right. The fire stick is like a USB the thing. The fire stick yeah. is Am yeah. Yeah. is it's Amazon's is Amazon's uh like Roku. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. They just put that Cody add-on on it, and then the Cody add-on mm -hmm. will go in and suck out all kinds of movies. I mean, you can see movies that people sit there in the theaters and, and record them on their phones and then post them, or you can see uh, that's, actual... Uh, that's high quality. Oh, that's shit. You have uh, to go yeah. through and find the good ones. But, what? you know, they actually have the good, you know, full-on movies any, why that would anybody, came out a couple weeks ago. Why would anybody 
even want to watch something like that. I, I know. As soon as I start watching it, I go, "What? I don't want to watch that shit. <laughs> yeah. But remember, that's the only thing we had for a very long time. Look, so yeah. there's what was, it, what, was the, what was the biggest picture of the spring? What was the biggest picture of the spring? Uh, uh, Black Panther. That's right. You can go on Netflix and see Black Panther. Black, you can yep. go anywhere yeah. but number of places. I waited for it to come on the big television yeah. uh, on I mean, TV so things, I could watch it on the big screen. In a short amount of time, these things were available anyway. So why that's, why watch some horrible version of it that somebody did at a movie theater with their That's iPhone? exactly my point, yeah. Yeah. And well, most of the time, even on now. Cody, most of the time it's a good version. You just got to find which one it Cody? is. Cody? What's Cody? It's that add-on that they put on the fire stick. Well, is it, is it an add-on that somebody created? Is that what it is? I think so, yeah. How's you know, that spelled? C-O-D-E-Y? K-O-D-I. Oh, K-O-D-I. I'll yeah. have to look that up and see what that's all about. Yeah. You know? Uh, and they just, they just it's an add-on they put on the fire stick, and it's just, like a, it's just like another, you know, Amazon movies or whatever, and you can go into it, yeah. and you can pick out all these streaming uh, sources and pick out movies that were let out last week and and there's a lot of good clean hd versions on it but you also run into these phone versions as well people don't know this yeah. offhand you but, the, but, but the fact is that you can uh, on uh, on your roku you can get porn how do you do that well because there are certain channels which are not official roku channels but if you know the uh, number for them the code number for them uh, you can get them to come up on your Roku. Uh, just go online and say porn on Roku, and you'll find a whole bunch of them. Some of them cost money, and some of them are free. But yeah, I like well, I tested a lot of my channels doing that, where you could go and do go see my test channels when I was working on trying to set the whole thing up so I could see how it looked before yeah. I submitted it the final version to Roku. So that's what they do with these things, and Roku doesn't mind. doesn't mind at all. You know. So it's an open system? What? Roku? Roku? It's it's an open system to a point. In other okay. words, if I, let's say, want to create a Roku channel of my own, I can get a, 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 a what do you call it? A, it's a, a code number, right? And then I can just put that into my, uh, into my uh, uh, go online and say, uh, I want to subscribe to, and then I will type in that number, and it will bring it up on my machine, on my Roku, on my particular Roku. But it's not something that they can get by going to the Roku store and picking out a channel. Okay. Ah, thank you. So, but you but it, it, and it's a way that a lot of the porn people are actually selling porn on Roku. And Roku doesn't have to sit around feeling they're responsible for being porn meisters. You Two know. minutes. So, <laughs> what? Two minutes. I know. Wow. I know. I just, do you hear that? You hear that? You hear that? It flew right what? by. Wait, we lost Brian already. He didn't even stick around to go? say goodbye. Well, you might be calling in a Jack show. Well, he can't call in a Jack show yet because if he calls in a Jack Still show, on. he gets my show. Yeah, mm. this is when you run to the bathroom. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is when you run. It's intermission. The... We all have to run to the bathroom. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He's back again. He's back again. <laughs> He's back again to, I guess, say goodbye. Did you come back to say goodbye, Brian? Yeah, my son just you, shut off on me. Just shut yeah. off on you, yeah. Hey, well, thank you, Brian, uh, for being with us tonight, as well as Renee. You know, we've hardly talked about politics at all. Boy, is that refreshing. That's because you're all losers. <laughs> uh, Kevin, we liked your buns. Yes, Kevin, well, thank, thank you for you. your buns. <laughs> Phil, thank you for your buns uh jeff <laughs> we're not talking about white ass thank you uh, Je jeff by the way ray has joined the have lunch with alex club now so uh, oh, nice yeah, yeah yeah so uh, yeah hey everybody uh why don't you just give a big wave goodbye so they can uh, see you go uh go away bye bye we'll see you hopefully tomorrow night that's our citizens panel for tonight next on this uh, little uh the Gabnet is a thing called uh, The Intersection with Jack Bishop. And then at 1 o'clock, uh, 11, midnight, at 1 o'clock this morning, I was right the first time, at 1 o'clock this morning, you got a thing called uh, Connections. 
And then tomorrow night, it, we start early with the arena, with the franchise MC. That's a sports show. And then Damien will be here at 9.30. I'm back again at 10 o'clock. Eastern Daylight Time, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.